It's very important to me to change the misconception that's out there in terms of the old boys club. Sitting on the board myself, being a relatively you know, younger uh, female, so much more progressive, sure, back in the day, I'm certain it was maybe more of an old boys club. It isn't anymore. You always would say, oh, the benefit is the leads and the business and, and all of this, but you know, in addition to that, a huge benefit is the personal growth. I learned a lot, and I've been doing this for, for over 15 years, and I'm still learning. I think it's because of that advocacy piece and, and the fact that it does listen to the, the issues of businesses is, is why I think it's very appropriate to call the London Chamber of Commerce the voice of business. Chamber was actually the first association that we ever joined um, for the purpose of trying to get out there and trying to meet and to connect with people and uh, in hindsight very happy. My company being an established company, I didn't think it was something that maybe we'd never needed. It, it far exceeded what I thought it would be actually. Realized that a voice that McCormick wanted to have was going to be much stronger as part of a larger group. It was, actually, it was actually a lot better than what, what I had expected. Small businesses have it very tough. They are busy individuals, always trying to find the next contract, the next job, and not always having time to, to look forward as globally as some of the economic experts that we bring here to London uh, can do for them. The caliber of people that come out to the Chamber of Commerce is what helps them to stand apart from um, other networking events. That my favorite Chamber event is the one that I show up at every time, and that's the Business After Five. It really helped me um, grow as a person. Uh, it's taking the introvert, I guess, and helping them to become a bit of an extrovert. I think that uh, the Chamber is, is one of the, the, the best ways to get involved at any different type of level that you'd like, whether it's business development, whether it's community engagement, whether it's advocacy. I think that uh, there's something out there for, for every type of business owner. Every Chamber has become an advocate on many of the same issues that we are. There's, they don't want to see us mortgage the future, but they want us to see us uh, take care of the present and set ourselves up properly for the future. And that's really what Council's interested in as well. You know, it's great when you walk in and you're meeting with four or five executives who are going to spend a million dollars on furniture, and they recognize you. They've met you somewhere before. So it's, it's not the immediate impact for me, it's the long-term gain for me. So it's a, it's a unique situation to be able to be on the board of the chamber as well as on, on LEDC as well. Yeah, I, th I see these two groups uh, working side by side and, and really supporting one another very, very closely. So becoming actively involved in the chamber I think is key. Jump in with two feet, belong to a committee that interests you, go out to the networking events because that's of course where you can have the most fun. Especially those of us who might enjoy a glass of wine, a little bit of food. Out and amazed um, when I went to the Business Achievement Awards the first year, just as an attendee. I think it was at, at the very back of, of the room that year. Um, but I, I marveled at it. I, it was, I was so impressed that 1,200 people would come out to celebrate um, business achievement in London and, and region. Super speed networking that we that we do four times a year. Jake McKenzie does an amazing job of facilitating it and just making it a, a whole lot of fun for the participants. And opinions were quite often quoted in the London Free Press. So we're quite often quoted on the CBC. When I first joined a committee at the chamber and walked into the big boardroom, you know you're expecting a certain sort of meeting to take place. It was loud, there was a ton of laughter, people are rambunctious, and when somebody puts a question out there like, I need a volunteer for this or that, everybody volunteered, and I'll never forget that. I've never once considered it work doing the stuff that we do with the marketing committee or even the agribusiness committee. Uh, the people that, that have chosen to, to work within the chamber have always been just a blast to work with and from like informal beer meetings to, to lunches, as long as we're getting stuff done, that's, that's really what matters, and you have a good time doing it. And don't get me wrong, the Chamber is structured, and it's one of the benefits of, of the way the organization has been built and the history behind it. But that doesn't mean that we can't have fun at the same time. The, the, I think the biggest piece of advice I tell people, if you're going to take on a membership, get, you know, do get involved, don't just sit on the sidelines. Do it. Don't hesitate, just do it. It's one of the best decisions I ever made. 
The chamber is a mainstay. It's always going to be there. There's always going to be events going on. They're going to run a great golf tournament. I think we have an obligation to our community. We've chosen to live here, and we, we should leave it better than we've uh, we found it. And I remember saying to my coworkers, I have to be so quick to get my hand up to volunteer for something before other people say yes. It's just a certain kind of energy. And so it's years later, now I get to chair those meetings, and it's still the same atmosphere. There's a definite fun culture. I remember when I was uh, young, I always wanted to make money so that I could then say I was some, someone to, to make money to become successful. And then I realized along the way, you have to become successful in here first to make the money.